Namdiwa Bayan joins us again today. He's a sports journalist. Thank you for coming on this morning. Namdiwa. Good to be here. Well, we will start off uh, this sports segment with the forthcoming NFF Congress, and it's actually holding tomorrow. And yes. uh, I mean, looking at the build up to this big conference holding tomorrow, we will expect some fireworks, should we? Uh, there, it's just been a case of what's going to happen tomorrow. Now, um, the main um, issues right now is the fact that people don't know if it's going to be an elective Congress. <laughs> Even though the Secretary did come out to say they are just going to pick a date and elect members into the Electoral Committee. We're hearing, um, all of a sudden, we're hearing that because it's going to be in worry, they might be doing it to favor a candidate. That it might be deliberately to favor, and the candidate people are saying it might be deliberately to favor is um, Amadji Pinik. No, yeah, but, but the rules will always apply. The rules will apply. It depends you know? on how you lobby. But you see, the thing is, the Congress is rotated everywhere. You cannot have one place for the NFF Congress. You have your NFF Congress everywhere. And um, for them to now all of a sudden say they believe it's because it's to favor Pinnick, um, that's why they're taking to worry. I, I don't know if that's healthy, but the truth is it can hold anywhere. Um, I don't think because it's in worry, people who are not members of the NFF are going to vote. Um, then again, some other candidates say all they know is that they're going for a Congress. It's not an elective Congress. But Megari had said before that it's before September 25th. So except the plan to have an elective Congress in the next five days, in five days after the election, I don't know how they're going to pull off that uh, miracle. Already we know who the forerunners are. Uh, forget everybody that is there. We know that right now it's almost a straight shootout between Diko, who's an LMC man, Ogunjobi, Uchegbolam, Amaju Pinik. Um, I think that um, Giwa might have fallen out of favor. Um, the public sympathy is not with him. So um, you would not want people, uh, people would not really want to associate their ballots with Chris Giwa right now. Um, even though his, his camp is still saying FIFA can't abort a, ba a born baby, and they still feel they are the rightful holders. So he thinks he's the born baby. Uh, he thinks he's the born baby. But now, a lot of intricacies cases now, people are saying, look, Amaji Pinnick is the start from the South South. He's the, he's the candidate that is being um, touted. Um, Ogunjobi is enjoying a lot of goodwill from the state FA chairman. They like Ogunjobi. He's someone they've known uh, for a long time. Uh, Diko is seen as the rising star of the LMC. He's um, supposedly Megari's anointed son uh, to take over at uh, the helms of the NFF. But the, um, where Ogunjobi has an edge is that the state FA chairman, they want somebody from the football clubs from the state FA. They don't want, um, a, so they don't want somebody from the um, technical side. They want one of their own to head it. Uh, so that means that um, it might give an edge to Ogunjobi, um, Uchegbolam, Pinik, these guys who are administrators at club level and at state level might have the edge in that uh, area. The um, issue now for Ogunjobi is uh, Benga, Elegbele, the DG of National Sports Commission is a southwesterner like him and they are saying federal character. We can't have an NFL chairman from the same region. Also, um, Amadji Pinnick is from the south-south, the same as the sports minister. So we cannot have a Naja Delta sports minister How come we have Naja Delta NFF. An NFF president, NFF sec gen from the same region. Is that allowed in the statutes, in the books? Well, right now, the federal character is being touted. It's, being, um, it, it's what they use. It's what people use every time they want to, um, will I say, create a bit of confusion in the whole process. So um, that way might clear the way for um, Uchegbolam, who might just be the dark horse in this race that nobody is really looking at. And this is somebody who, like the rest of them, has a, a lot of, um, he has a track record in the NFF. He's someone who's he's, well- He's been around. He's been around. And you know, with respect to, the truth is, um, people might complain, oh, all these people, it's same old, same old. The truth is, how many other people put themselves forward at state level, at state FA? to become delegates, to go there, to get to the NFF. If these guys are going to put themselves forward, we might as well accept what is there and look at the merits of who we have there. Um, Diko, for instance, um, the LMC has been fantastic in terms of its development, in terms of the administration. I'm going to do this when we look for league results, if you went at the match and league information. Um, now there's video evidence, um, there's quick punishment for people who um, go foul of the law. Yes, we're not there yet, but you can see the um, progress the LMC is making. Even um, online, on social media, they seem to have a tab of all of us sports journalists. They keep in touch with us. So, um, and this is, um, Dico is largely credited with having a lot to do with this. So what that's, about the state FAs? Will the, they now, want Dico? That's where it is again now. The state FAs want either Ogunjovi or Chegbolam. Um, these two guys now are guys who we know that if calf backs, Nigeria can back back. Uh, these are the guys who know the terrain. These are the guys who will not be intimidated by the politics in CAF. They will not be um, intimidated by the lopsided francophone um, the, um, agendas we have in, in CAF. Um, these are two guys who have faced 
calf before and they, they know the terrain, they are not afraid. So on the continental side with regards to the super egos are clubs in Africa. Um, these are guys who can take charge and even this issue we had with our um, age grade national team where they got stranded and left because um, of an Ebola scare. By now, um, CAF would have been really on fire if we had any of these people at the helm. So um, these are the positives uh, for them. For Amadju Pinnick, I think his own um, claim to fame will be the fact that Delta Sports has been very rapidly developing and they are responsible for a lot of the medals Nigeria gets at events. Um, they are really a one-man show when we have a national sports festivals. Um, in terms of the um, youth um, tournament they had um, last year, that's where Divine Uduru, um, Uduru was discovered. The French the, the um, apart of the equipment they have, um, the fact that um, they are really um, pushing the agenda of sports in the state, that's, his own, um, that's where his own strength will be. Um, if he comes in, will he be the guy that can bring grassroots football back? Will he be the guy that can make sure that state level everybody develops? So all these candidates have their strengths. We have to decide what do we want now. Um, if it's organization, um, administration, technically, um, Dico, my fear is that it might get derailed by the politics if he's not hands-on. Uchegbolam, Ogunjobi, they know the politics. We're not getting suspended, we're not getting banned. None of that is happening. You are almost living in a bubble when you have such people. They, are, they have the, uh, well, I say they are guardians. They know the terrain and they intimidate the outside as much as the outside will try to intimidate you. So it, it may be sports, but... We're talking about the politics of sports. The now. politics of sports, and these are the masters. These two, Chegbola and Gunjobi, those are the masters. If we're going to be, if we're going to have any leverage yeah. in international sports politics, those are the people who know that terrain. Amadu Pinnick, um, if he wants, if he can bring the Delta State model to Nigeria, mm -hmm. it, it could be, it could be good for us in terms of development. So, as much as you might want to complain, all these guys do have uh, their strong points. All right. Let's quickly flip over to the UEFA Champions League. Now, it was a big night for so many of those clubs. Two nights uh, yesterday and the day before. And what a debut. For, for those teams that debuted, I mean, so the Lodograts, the uh, Liverpools, how would you rate the performance of what you saw? Uh, well, there were just some key performances to look at. And first of all was that we'd seen Chelsea's team role in the Premiership. Um, but the fear had always been that they haven't come up against quality opposition. Now, they came against semi-decent opposition. Uh, Schalke are used to getting routed by English teams, but they came and got a 1-0 draw. With a depleted side? With a, not just a depleted side, with a side that was missing um, a lot of key players in key positions. Oh. They even had to alter their formation to play Chelsea. Okay. And so we'll uh, see some of those highlights there. Yeah, yeah and um, if, if, uh, for Arsenal, it, it was not one of those good nights, you know. Wenger went out there, 4-1, 4-1. Uh, and that's about the first uh, time in how many years that he's opening his Champions League experience with, with a loss. You, you, and you don't do that against Dortmund, you know. They know how to use space well. You isolate Flamini, they get rid of him. And they, there has been a complaint that Ozil might be the problem. He's slow, he's lazy. I think it's not that. I think he's on the wrong side of the pitch. Um, he's a left footer who is not a runner. He's not a natural winger. Can they give him a number 10 position? Uh, even a number, even on the right side of midfield, because if he stops and turns, his left foot is facing the danger position. He can drop dangerous passes, he can cross, he can shoot. But when you put him on the left, he's left to either cross or pass the ball back to people in the defensive midfield position. So you can never get a quick, fluid attack with Ozil uh, starting it. So number but 10 we, and number we 7. We even understand that even Dortmund also had a depleted the, side. Matt Hummels wasn't in the defence. Uh, Kagara wasn't in the middle. But Dortmund have a very good fact assembly line. Klopp is a very intelligent buyer. Um, every striker of Dortmund, whether Lewandowski or whether now Immobile, you have no business playing in the middle. Your job is to get the ball and finish. And then his link players like Aubameyang and um, Grosskreis, who is a product of Dortmund. He came along the line, mm -hmm. understudying Gotza all the way. But when Gotza left, he stepped in. So um, even with a side that doesn't have a lot of first team players, uh, Klopp can still give anybody a tough time. What I didn't expect, the 2-0 was flattering for Arsenal. It could have been much, 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 much. What about debutants? Uh, Lodogrets or Raskard, as they are known. Mm -hmm. it, it was very, very sad. I mean, first of all, it's, you hold Liverpool goalless for 82 minutes. Balotelli scores. Then in injury time, you get an equaliser. And you think you have a famous draw at Anfield, only <laughs> to give away a penalty less than two minutes later. And that, the same. That, that's welcoming them to the Champions Welcome League. Welcome to the Champions League. You snooze, you lose. It's as simple as that. You have to be on your toes. Uh, you have to be uh, very, very quick. Uh, Man City, they're getting a hang of it. Um, they, Again, they lost. They, they lost, but it's a much better performance. And if you don't forget, um, last season, 
they lost at home to Bayern Munich and went and won in the um, Allianz Arena. So will, will we see a reverse this time? Um, that we, we don't know. Any, anything could happen. Um, Pellegrini didn't top the group last season because of wrong calculations. If he had scored one more goal, he would have topped the group. But he decided to sit back and defend against Bayern Munich, even a draw or even a loss with a low scoreline. But yeah. in this time, they, 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 they will get it right. Real Madrid, they've turned, they are trying to turn the corner. And I think that 5 1 trash of. Yeah, Bamu, I mean, that result was, it's, it was huge. It boosts your spirit. One. Yeah, and it makes them the first team in um, Champions League to score 1,000 goals. They are the first, wow. they are the first, so they are the first with 10 Champions League, the first with 1,000 goals. Uh, yeah. And this same team coming on the back of two defeats, yes, two in, defeats La Liga, in La Liga. And they turned the screw in Champions League. Well, I think their team is more, um, it, it, it's more adept to, the Euro, to, European, to European nights. Um, I think in Spain, everybody's sitting back and defending. But in the Champions League, everybody's taking their chances. I mean, we're all champions from different countries. Nobody really comes out to sit back and contain in the Champions League. But in their league, people are going to sit back. People are going to sit tight. Um, there's going to be a fear factor. Nobody wants to be hammered by uh, Real Madrid. But they will have to carry this form back into the league. On paper, they have a very, very decent team. You can't have Rodriguez, Bill, Ronaldo, um, Isco, Modric, and so many players, and not really terrorise every other team um, at will. But the, the, uh, if we could still go back to some of these results, and uh, the one for uh, Man City and Bayern. You remember Man City, at the last time they uh, were out of the Champions League, when they were knocked out, yeah. uh, the, com the captain company did say, yes, we will be back this season and we will fear no one. Uh, yes. So is that reflecting? Did you see reflecting the last match, this first match that they had? It, it, it was, it was the, the, a deflected goal late in the match. And you could see how happy Guardiola was. That would tell you one thing. <laughs> City came and City held their own. I've always been surprised at their inability to make headway in Europe with the squad they have. They have a deep squad. Um, they have two world-class players in every position. Uh, man for man, they're better than most teams in Europe. So I've always wondered why they find it difficult. But I guess it's a mental thing. And perhaps Pellegrini has helped his team uh, overcome that hurdle in his usual manner, quietly going about his business and getting things done. All right, so um, uh, they can see the other results there, but that's where we we'll had to let it go today. Thank you, Namdi, for coming on this morning. All right, we'll be back in just a moment. Join us again.